I mean, one of the things you find in uh, lots of creative areas is that things that begin to, on the cutting edge after a while become mainstream and accepted by everybody. And so you often find a ratcheting up of quality. As soon as somebody's had a great idea, it then sort of spreads out and that becomes the benchmark. Um, and I, th you know, I, I won't patronise people with, with an endless stream of examples, but, but um, uh, one really obvious one is uh, editing. The way that video editing, the idea of split screens, of cutting over, of overlaying things, began as quite avant-garde film. And now it's primetime television drama. It seems to me that you're getting ideas like the Meerkat, which is kind of funny, but that's probably about the best advert on TV at the moment. You know, what happens is now all the other compare the um, uh, price range uh, advertisers um, do exactly the same. All right, so compare the market have got a Meerkat. Right, we'll have an opera singer. Right, we'll have uh, Omar Jalili. We'll have we'll do exactly the same. Um, and there have been on television recently some of the worst adverts of all time. I mean, not just worst adverts, the worst adverts I've ever seen have been on television at the moment, um, which, which, which is depressing because it, you know, it means that ideas are falling back down the hill at such an astonishing rate. Um, people who are uh, obsessed with telling stories tend not to really understand money. And people who really, really understand and are interested in the movement of money tend not to be very good at telling stories. Now, it could be that there's a fundamental reason for this. It could just be a cultural fad that's lasted for 50 years. But if you are genuinely interested in how money works, you tend not to write good books. If you really write great books, you tend not to really understand how money works, which is why agents exist. That's why the agents in... Hollywood, in books, everywhere, because people who do creativity don't really do money. Um, now, if you're going to be a really good brand manager, if you're going to be a really good... Uh, 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 well, if you're going to run a large part of Unilever, your duty, your fiduciary duty, is to your shareholders. Your responsibility is money-making. And I think that chances of you being a brilliant storyteller are slim as a result. I'm not condemning either side. We need both. But you... I don't think that if you're really good at watching the bottom line, you're going to be great at making a 30-second ad. I think if you're great at making a 30-second ad, you're going to be really rubbish at watching the bottom line. That's why loads of agencies collapse. You know, so I mean, these people who make brilliant ads, that's a great ad. Suddenly the agency's gone. You're thinking, how did that happen? And the answer is they didn't really understand the other stuff. You know, they, they, there's a great uh, phrase, which is any ad agency is three telephone calls from disaster, which is because that, those are the kind of margins and the flimsy nature that advertising agencies work on. So, um, but clients are different. Yeah, clients are all about that. Agency of the future that would survive the, the, the current chaos. I think you'd have to deal with, with the problem that there are really there are really competing sets of principles and ideas which appear to cancel each other out. If you had a vast room with a thousand creatives in, then you'd produce rubbish. I mean, you really would. You know, you can see the 1950s typing pool. Everyone being creative, you know, it's not going to work. Creativity works well in odd-shaped rooms with bizarre people doing ridiculous, eccentric stuff. So, on the one hand, you have to be small. Conversely. Margins are so tight, you know? Uh, everyone's looking to shave a tiny bit off here, a tiny bit off there. If you're just handling that tiny bit of the client's business, you're never going to have any money. You're never going to have the freedom to think. So you've got to be big. So you've got to be small and you've got to be big. You know, you, you can't be a creative in film storytelling and understand how to do great Google ads. So you've got to then make sure that there's another company that does the uh, Google advertising. But again, if you do that, you're losing that revenue. That goes off somewhere else. Maybe that person then hires someone who makes a good film, they pitch to the company. So you've got to be really, really specialised and really immensely uh, general. So all of these things seem to suggest that it's impossible. How can you do this? How can you be um, really big and really small? How can you be a specialist in everything but a generalist as well? Um, and uh, again, and perhaps obsessively, uh, I turn to Hollywood. Because if Hollywood is a, uh, a case study for anything, it's how to be really creative and really handle money. Because 
you know, the, sh the sheer volume of cash that goes through Hollywood in a year outdoes the gross domestic product of most countries in the world. You know, if you're looking at um, uh, films that cost hundreds of millions of dollars and they're chucking them out by the truckload, you know, so how do they do it? And, you know, the way they do it is they have the idea the studio exists, but it doesn't exist. I mean, what is a Hollywood studio? It's kind of an idea because, you know, there's the lot, but the lot isn't really necessary because if you go into a Hollywood studio lot, all the people who are hiring that lot don't work for Disney. Disney's lot isn't, is rarely used by Disney. You're Disney off in Toronto making the film. Um, uh, who's, does the director work for the studio? Well, no, the director's with the Creative Artists Agency. In fact, if you look at it, the actor's with the Creative Artists Agency and the scriptwriter. It's the agency that's packaged, the, 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 the agency that's packaged it together. So what actually is the studio? Who are these, you know? And that's the thing, that the Hollywood studios are sort of this nebulous, money-borrowing kind of thing. And what they do is they give everybody space to do the things that they need to do, and they let them work in small rooms if they want to. You can have your own office over there, or you can come onto the lot. You can have, hey, Aaron Sorkin, you're doing stuff for us. Well, look, you can have that building if you want, or maybe that doesn't work for you. Maybe you want to work from home. Um, so everybody who works has the great idea that they're working for Disney. But at the same time, they never get the sense. You talk to people in Hollywood, yeah, Disney never got involved in this. They just let us do what we want to do. You know, we never had anyone looking over our heads. HBO, they didn't look over. They didn't tell everyone just... And gradually and subtly, HBO and Disney do things in certain ways so that they get a recognisably HBO product, a recognisably Disney product. But if you talk to anyone, they all say, yeah, I don't know how Disney hired me. I just did the thing and the staff and it came out and there it is. It's great. So there is a model there. You know, you can... You can uh, you can be creative off in a small room, provided there are people there who, cre who care about creativity. If you're, if you're trying to inspire, if you're trying to say to someone, when you go into the supermarket, you can buy beans for 30p or beans for 24p, uh, and that's all you need worry about, then you might as well not have a brand. And that, that's, that's Google, really. Google is not having a brand. Google is just telling someone how much something costs and where it is. Um, and I think that if, uh, if that is the uh, reason that uh, advertisers think they've got a greater ability to communicate, and then um, there are a lot of advertisers who focus their attention entirely on Google will go very badly wrong very, very soon because um, the nature of wanting stories and inspiration will always exert itself in the end.